What a season it's been so far as we head into the break and towards the new year. Welcome to Sportswire. I'm Will Catter. Of course, still fresh in the minds of Springer Nation is their remarkable run to their fourth straight state football championship. Make no mistake, the Springer's stockings are full. The achievement capped off a tremendous season, not just for Highland Springs, who will go for the ultimate five-peat next year, which would be a state record, but also for other teams like Henrico, who made it to the regional finals for the first time since the 90s. How about Glenn Allen? The Jaguars not only won their first playoff game in school history, but also tallied the most victories in Glenn Allen lore as well. So many storylines, so many great games. Let's take another look back at the best of football here in Henrico. <laughs> Will you hold the line when every one of them is giving up and giving in? Tell me, in this house of mine, nothing ever comes without a consequence of cost. Tell me, will the stars align? Will heaven step in? Will it save us from a sin? Will it? Cause this house of mine stands strong. That's the price you pay. Leave behind your heart. Springs continue to hold the headlines in football. When it comes to fall sports, the gift that kept on giving was the deep run Wildcats. They took home the state title in golf for the third consecutive season, as fall was just getting started, and were also dominant in field hockey and cross country. And let's not forget boys volleyball, where deep run was looking for back-to-back -back state titles and a shot at revenge against Glen Allen, who knocked them off to win regionals. Time for a sports wire rewind. Deep run versus Glen Allen for the state championship. So we might as well go for the entire enchilada. You got the Glen Allen faithful right there. You got the deep run fans. Well, right there and to the victor go the spoils. Let's get this party started at Kaplan Arena. Glen Allen starting things off with a serve. A great get right there. Excellent dig setting up for who else? Drew Clyde getting the work done. 
Drew Klein, 14 kills on the evening. And then checking it out, it's number 11, Parker Bailey. He had a heck of a game as well with nine kills. Bailey again with the answer. It was all Glenn Allen in the opening set, just as it was first time these guys met. Daniel Wynn, he was huge on this one. Nine kills on the evening. Let's go, says Klein. Glenn Allen is going. They take the first set 25-19. Switching sides now. Deep run. What do champions do? They respond. Glenn Allen, or deep run, make that. Lost their first set to Indian River. So this is nothing new to them. And they get the point right there. You saw it. And then number three again on the serve. Excellent. Tyler Weber. And it would lead to this. Slam it down, knock it down. Michael Wright, who was huge once again, the senior. He's committed to uh, play some Big Ten volleyball. We'll tell you later where. 22 kills, 14 digs on the evening. Number 11, Hayden Bocamp had a heck of an evening as well. He gets the kill right there. More second set action. Bocamp bringing it down. Taking down the house in deep run. Getting right back into this one. We tie the match up one squared. One apiece, 25-16. Michael Wright on the serve, third set. Could Glenn Allen get back into this one? Looks like it. Great point right there by the Jags. Caden Coward, 11 kills on the evening. Coward on the serve, deep run. They have answers. Gonna set it up right here. Knocking it down for the kill. Number 34's really been huge. Sean McDermott, Michael Wright, and Sean McDermott makes this deep run. The volleyball team work as outside hitter. Glenn Allen comes right back, though. They get the kill. Drew Klein doing what he can, and then Klein on the serve, and it's such a powerful one. Deep run does a great job to get it, though, and then set it right back up for the kill. It goes out of bounds, but it was tipped by the Jags, so that point counts they take. The third set, 25-19. All of a sudden, it's a two to one deep run lead. Could they put him away? Michael Wright says, yeah, I got this. Again, one of his 22 kills on the night. Wildcats again later, got that one to go as well this time. Number 12, Mason Wagonhauser. And then how about on the serve, McDermott, Glenn Allen. Gonna come right back. Cowart, what a kill. Off the deflection, that counts. There were three times in this fourth set where Glenn Allen had a three-point lead. And every single time, deep run would not allow it to get much further. Klein feels it right there. They're tied at 21 at that point. 22-21, Glenn Allen. But then, deep run showed some moxie. They also showed some Sean McDermott. Huge kill right there. Wildcats can feel it now, just a point away. And that shot, the kill shot by Drew Klein is out. And the Wildcats celebrate on the floor and with their fans as Deep Run can go back to back. State champs, as coach Kevin Pond hoists the hardware. Wildcats win it three games to one and we hear them on in post. I'm so proud of these guys, their composure, the way they held it in and kept themselves focused. Um, they listened, they made the adjustments we asked them to make, got the balls up, we asked them to get up, and, and it was just amazing. I mean, it was a lot different this year. Uh, last year we uh, kind of always had that upper, like the upper part in our uh, conference, but this year we were evenly matched and it made playing them every time a lot harder, especially since we know all of them, we all play club ball together, just a lot more intensity when playing them this year. Just, just keep working, keep grinding, you know. I think all of us want, want a three-peat if possible. So I think we're ready to come back even hungrier next year. A huge win for the Wildcats, and make no mistake, Glenn Allen will be back as well. We continue our step back to the best of fall when we come back as Deep Run makes a deep run in field hockey. That's next. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untodd-like of you. 
Come on, Todd. Come on, man. We see them score on the field and the courts. But for many student athletes, the greatest wins are away from the arena. From his serves to his saves, Hermitage senior Sam Allberger is a young man of action. Sam is 110%. When he sets his mind on something and decides he wants to make something happen, he is going to make it happen. I am Sam Allberger, and that is Charles Bellinger. And we will be your MC today. He's the master of pep rallies. I love spirit. I love getting excited about things. As you know, I'm very passionate. And um, just getting other people engaged, getting other people excited, and, uh, and just taking a break from the everyday life of high school. Setting up some pretty special moments for his classmates. In the classroom, he's not your average student. I stepped outside and stood in the silver tarnish of the half moon. I like the fact that he wants to learn not just for the sake of learning, like he seems genuinely interested in what we're doing, and he's, he also seems interested in what other people have to say. I'm definitely not a quiet kid in the classroom. I love, I love to talk, I love to engage, I love to uh, push other students by being a devil's advocate. Even as an advocate for change. This generation right here, right now, my generation. There are so many kids and so many people that are my age that have these great ideas, and using our skills to, to, to go beyond the classroom, to go outside of the community and really make a difference is the most important thing. Helping somebody else is the most fulfilling thing that I can do today. He's got a passion for things both you know on the field or on the court and in the classroom and out in the community. Good. Yes. A passion that drives Sam into the spotlight. And Sam Elberger continues to excel in his senior year at Hermitage. Welcome back to the show. The Deep Run Wildcats have been very good for years in field hockey, and a strong-minded senior helped a young team fight for the ultimate prize once again in 2018. first started coaching seven years ago we started playing Trinity um, and we would get blown out every game you know 6-0 at least um, and then you know last year we picked up collegiate this year we picked up St. Catharines and I think for them a big hurdle was the fact that you know it, it's okay that we're playing a private school it's just we've got to go out there and play our best game and I think that they've started to recognize the correlation between playing those tougher teams and how that prepares us for postseason and playing teams from the beach and from Northern Virginia. It also helped Deep Run dominate conference opponents such as Freeman, Glen Allen, and Godwin, en route to a perfect regular season against teams that were not private schools. We do have a lot of players that play with people from Glen Allen and Godwin and Freeman on different club teams. So, you know, that always makes it a lot more exciting, you know, to definitely go in and put our best game forward and make sure that we're not losing to you know, friends and players that are teammates on other teams that they play on. One of the stars who helped lead Deep Run into the postseason was co-captain Natalie Balunas. I guess we weren't really expecting to go to states, so like we were just kind of like having fun, which I think made the biggest difference because for the past three years, like we were all just like states, states, states. But now this year happens, like we were just like having fun. Natalie has been a shining star in the postseason last year and this year as well. Not that she's not a shining star all season, um, but she's definitely not a selfish player. She's a great coach on the field, um, and she really does what she can, I think, to raise everybody's level of play. Um, but then when it gets to tournament time, she's like, all right, I know I can do this. You know, put the ball on my stick. And, you know, that's where you see, like, the hat trick against Benchville and, um, you know, some other teams in the, in the postseason. I feel like for the past couple of years, like, when we've gone to states, we're just like, oh, like, state championship. But I feel like all of us kind of, like, knew, like, under our breath that, like, it, like, we didn't know if we could pull it off or not. But, like, this year, like, we knew we could do it. So I hope next year, like, they don't give up.
The Wildcats, after beating Benchville in the quarterfinals, took out Mountain View in overtime before losing in the state championship to Gloucester, also in extra time. Still a tremendous year for Deep Run as Natalie continues her play next season at LaSalle. Well, just as the football postseason was getting underway, Deep Run had a few more surprises in cross country. That's straight ahead, but first, we head back to Highland Springs for another Sportswire Spotlight. We see them score on the field and the courts. But for many student athletes, the greatest wins are away from the arena. Christian White, this is his fourth year as a Springer football player. Senior night at Highland Springs. One last chance for players like Christian White to play a regular season home game. Oh, the memories. Hey, y'all know we had to be in here at 5 a.m. for two a day. It's football. It's really, it's for football me. really <laughs> worth it. <laughs> Hey, look what we are now. <laughs> and where they are now is in the playoffs with a chance to win four straight state titles. And Christian has been a big factor. He's a quarterback of our defense. He's extremely important. His words, his comments, his constant camaraderie with teammates, we need those on a regular basis, and, and he's the guy to do it. But Christian doesn't just ball out on the field. He's also very savvy in the classroom. He said he's get, just got inducted into NHS this year, which means he has to have a 3.5 GPA overall. He has to show leadership, he has to show community service, he has to have great character. And you know, a 3.5 is a is a is a big GPA, but it's even harder when you're taking AP classes and honors classes along the way. And those are things Christian has done all through high school. I bring the same dedication in every aspect I do in life. I mean it's either you give it your all or don't give it none at all. So I just try to give everything my all, try to work my best at it. Clear! Clear! He's pretty handy with cars, too. So when I was younger, uh, me, my uncle, and my granddad used to go out backyard shit, play around with some tools, some cars real quick. Just tool them up, that's it, and I just found it a hobby. Outside of here, but inside of here. I can see him being an engineer. Uh, I, I can see him developing cars. I can see him being a congressman. Uh, I can see him doing a lot of different things, but, but Christian's a great kid to be around, and, and because his personality is, is what it is, I can see him doing a plethora of things. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking, and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. What? I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? Colleges love extracurricular activities. Uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchool.com for more info. Welcome back to Sportswire. It's more than just a tale of two runners when it comes to deep run cross country. Both the guys and girls had very strong teams in 2018. And that includes down-to-the-wire individual state titles in the balance for one Lily Snow and Colby Bircher. There were several things that we thought were possible and they were our goals um, for the guys as a team and the girls as a team and also individually for Lily and Colby. We just had one of those days where everything fell into place. And it was a day for Lily Snow that she hadn't seen all year. I didn't have the most confidence after regionals and districts. Like at Pole Green kind of screwed me up a little bit. But like after that, I was pretty determined to win. Well, she puts herself in a position, you know, to, to go out there and have a chance to win each time. But after continuous second place finishes at Pole Green Park, she had one last chance in states. I've worked too hard to just let it go like this and not put, 
everything I have into the States race where it's been the goal of mine, like pretty much all through high school to win cross country States. So that was a really like big motivator for me. The motivation paid off as Lily Snow came home with the state championship while the team finished second place overall. It's that never give up. And so, you know, she's wanted this one for a while. And, uh, you know, so I'm pretty excited that she was able to see it through. When states came calling for Colby Bertram, he was looking for his third consecutive first place finish. At first, it was a little out there to go for that goal. It was not really heard of to go for all three. I think only one person has done it in deep run history. So, um, but it felt, it felt doable. Districts I won and then I was just like, okay, well, let's see what I can do. And then I won regionals and then I knew I had to go for states. It was a feat that a deep run junior was not used to accomplishing. He came out as a junior and had a possibility, you know, he was somewhere going to be in the top five. And, um, you know, he had a pretty, pretty crazy finish as well. He, he didn't give up until the tape. It was a little scary. I'm used to being the underdog since I'm only a junior right now. And um, I've never really been that like top guy that's like supposed to win. And I always just kind of come from behind and that's just how I used to race. And um, I don't know, it was a little different being able to go in having the confidence that I can do it and like it's like my race that I can control. In the end, it was his to control as he won the state title. With Deep Run at least, uh, he's the first junior to have won a state title. And his team won the state championship as well. Congratulations to both Bertram and Snow in their victories. The guys team also took home first place in states while the ladies finished second. Speaking of cross country, let's head back into the spotlight for a cyber crime fighting runner. We see them score on the field and the courts. But for many student athletes, the greatest wins are away from the arena. Sometimes it can be hard to stand out from the crowd, particularly in a sport like cross country. It takes a lot of toughness to be successful in cross country and, and track and all that stuff. Yeah, pretty good finish, right? Deep run senior Emil Bags has no problem with toughness. He's a really good teammate. He's selfless. And he's a really, really gritty guy. So he. He's as tough as it gets out there, really. And Emil doesn't just work hard with his legs. I've been doing competitive programming for most of my time here at Deep Run. Probably faster with my mind, but I mean, my, my leg speed's catching up. Ever since he was a freshman, he was really interested not only in programming, but he also um, really quickly latched on and took an interest in cybersecurity. This summer, I did an internship with network as a network engineer. I'm actually hired by a company or whatever to try to hack their system. And then by doing that, it reveals like, here's what's wrong. Engel is focused on, I want to do well in programming. I'm really interested in security. Um, he's the president of our Computer Science Honor Society. But he's learned a lot of this on his own. He's put a lot of focus and study and it, his own personal time to learn and, and become um, an expert in these fields. Whether he's using his legs or using his computer savvy, Abel's future might be in the bag. Kids that have those kinds of skills and are interested and motivated as Emil is, is pretty much going to be able to write his own ticket. And that brings us to the top plays of the month. We're going to cheat a little bit. Number five, we're going November and December. This one back in well, this current month, December, pick in the pocket is Chris Butler from Glenn Allen. Slam a jamma in a game against Goblin. The Eagles would come back to win. Number four, Henrik Overina. This is back to November. Playoffs, playoffs, intercepted. Henrik goes Joey Jefferson. Changes momentum, and Henrik changes their fortunes. Winning against the Blue Devils, advancing, and then beating LC Bird, making it to their first regional football playoff appearance since the 1990s. Number three, let's go to gymnastics. Degree of difficulty winning out on this one. This is Deep Run's Melina Ringus on the uneven bars. And so much skill, so much body control. One of the best things I saw this particular week. 
And check out the dismount as well, because it's going to be good enough for a score you don't see often. 9.45 with the landing. Number two, let's stay. Gymnastics, same meet. Freshman, Melanie Horan for Glenn Allen. Staking it on the vault. 9.2, wow. But number one goes to number one and number one. Watch the fake on the pass there. And instead it's Devontae Waller connecting with Antoine Wells and both these guys, big reasons why they went back, two back, two back, two back. State championships, the Springers, number one for a reason. They deserve it and good enough for top play of the month. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.pa.us. And you can always follow us on Twitter. I can't wait to see y'all next time on Sportswire.